I want to introduce myself. I'm Kevin Russell. I serve as Vice President for Enrollment and Marketing at Bellhaven University. And I want to welcome all of our participants and some of the staff here for a, a information session on the GSV MBA. We're really excited about this new program and looking forward to sharing more with you. Let me give a few kind of a uh, housekeeping uh, things. And just as you already heard, we are going to record this session. We've got several folks that were not able to join, but have asked us to please, please, please uh, record the session. We also have a couple that are going to join a few minutes late. And so they'll be coming on. Um, uh, we all are so used to being in what I call the Brady Bunch world, the multiple boxes uh, with Zoom and other ways to communicate. I'm sure by now we're all used to it. But uh, for the ease of this, it might be helpful for those of you, if you would change uh, your view to a gallery view, that will allow, uh, and that's in the top right corner, uh, that allow when we have our speakers that you'll be able to focus just on them and not have to discern uh, where they are. Uh, we do wanna encourage questions as they come up. This is, this in, in more than anything is an info session for our prospective students and I, we think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, with that, I will have several questions to share with uh, Michael as well as some other folks on our, uh, that will be on the call. But more than anything, we want this to be very, very helpful to uh, any of you that are considering this as, a, as an option. We think you're gonna be very, very pleased with what you'll hear. Before we uh, bring uh, and introduce Michael formally, I do want to uh, mention a couple other people that will likely be commenting uh, throughout this. First is Dr. Audrey Kelleher. Audrey is our Vice President for Adult Graduate and Online Studies. So Audrey, just kind of wave if you would. I think you did, but there she is. Um, now, Doreen, you wave back at her. So now people think, you know, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, but Dr. Uh, Kelleher uh, works with all of our curriculum and has worked extensively with Michael on that, as well as she uh, manages our accreditation for the university and the faculty and staff training as it deals with the adult and graduate online programs. Also, Sheila Horn, if you wave everyone, Sheila. Um, Sheila is our director of uh, online recruitment. And along with Lisa Britt is working with our prospective students in this uh, startup program. So depending on how the flow goes, any of those folks may join on. So I wanted to introduce them beforehand. I do wanna just give a little bit of a formal presentation or introduction to, about Michael. Uh, Michael Moe is the founder and CEO of GSV Asset Management, which is a modern merchant bank that invests, advises, partners in the fast growing dynamic companies of the world. Uh, GSV stands for Global Silicon Valley. And while it's based in, in the Silicon Valley, it was launched with the belief that the mindset of innovation and entrepreneurship is global and can happen anywhere. Michael has many prominent honors, including being an institutional investors, all American, Wall Street Journal's best on the street. Uh, he was recognized as Business Week as one of the best stock pickers in the country. And in 2006, Michael uh, authored the uh, business bestseller, Finding the Next Starbucks, which has gone through three printings in five different languages and has landed and is lauded for its insights into investing in emerging growth companies. In 2017, Global Silicon Valley Handbook was written by Michael, uh, which highlights the top innovation hubs around the world. And in May 2020, Michael launched the GSV MBA through this partnership with Belhaven University that we're so excited to be sharing with you today. So with that, Michael, uh, we'd love for you to start off first question, which is tell us just a little bit more about GSV. Some people may be very familiar, but others may not know much at all about GSV. Tell us a little bit about GSV. Sure, uh, GSV is a, a platform, as you mentioned, investment platform based in Silicon Valley that um, I founded 10 years ago. Um, my background going way back, I was a research analyst um, covering fast growing companies uh, I was, I was uh, head of global growth research at Merrill Lynch. Uh, I was head of growth research at Lehman Brothers and, and then founded an investment bank um, called Think Equity Partners that we grew um, to a couple hundred people and sold to a London firm in 2007. So GSV is really uh, focused on identifying, investing, and accelerating the fastest growing, most dynamic companies in the world, what we call the stars of tomorrow. 
And that coupled with this thesis that we've had from the beginning, which is that Silicon Valley is no longer just a, a ge geography. It's, it's really a mindset. It's the mindset of innovation and entrepreneurship that's made Silicon Valley such a remarkable place is spreading throughout the world. And what I like to say is, is we, we want to connect Silicon Valley to this emerging global Silicon Valley from Austin to Boston, from Chicago to Sao Paulo, from Mumbai to Shanghai to Dubai and everywhere else. Because we think very, one, uh, we think um, and a big part of our GSV MBA is we think that talent is pretty equally distributed around the world but opportunity is not. And so what we're trying to do with this online MBA program is to provide the type of insight, the kind of uh, uh, capabilities and connectivity and confidence to really not only have the startups survive, but thrive during their evolution. And just one last other piece of, of, of GSV, how do you think about it, I guess, as a platform we invested in you know, game changing. Mean, we were fortunate to be able to invest in companies like Facebook and Twitter and Spotify and Snap and Lyft, Coursera, Dropbox, all when they were private companies. But what I believe, you know, really the future is about is, you know, that that uh, uh, old McDonald had a farm, EIEIO. Well, new McDonald has a startup and it's EIEIO. It's all about entrepreneurship, innovation, education, impact, and equal opportunity. So that's the focus at the uh, GSV as we look ahead. And, um, and again, I think this GSV MBA program is something that we believe can be um, you know, really, really special. That's great, Michael. Thanks for, for that. And I did want to uh, uh, remind participants that uh, if you do have a question, uh, go ahead and uh, indicate in the chat box, and that will be one way for us to see that, just to let us know. Or if you want to go ahead and post your question, uh, it may be one that we can answer within the chat. So we'll, we want to be attentive to the questions that, uh, that, that you may have uh, as we go forward in discussing this. One of the things I'm always curious about when I even heard about this coming and, and got to meet you for the first time, Michael, was, you know, there, there are truly many MBAs in the market today. But as you look at that, and I know you've worked with many MBAs, and, uh, what, what is special? What do you think is special about uh, and different about the GSV MBA that we have uh, been developing and are now offering to start your classes in August? Well, first of all, um, you know, there are many fine MBA programs, but what I think that most of them are focused on what I call kind of theoretical knowledge. And what the GSV MBA is all about is real world skills and knowledge and connectivity. That is, I think, the essence of what people want to get from a program. And, and again, most of the MBAs are management oriented. The entrepreneurship program is really about what are the skills and fundamentals and capabilities you need to, to, to run your business. And obviously there's management skills that are needed, but there's many more that um, I think are, are, are fundamental to this program. And again, I think if you narrowed even the comparison between the GSV MBA program, you know, focused on entrepreneurship and some of these other entrepreneurship programs, I would say that in, in looking at m many of the programs and again, not being critical, I'm just saying that I think it's it's about what we're providing is real world knowledge, really helping, you know, the, the, one of the key essences, you're gonna launch your business. It's not just some theoretical exercise. It's literally where the, the culmination, the graduation of launching a business and then being part of this network that is there to support and help uh, develop the business as it goes forward. You don't just kind of graduate and you're off on your own. It's, it's, this is about a community that we're creating here. That's great. And, you know, uh, one of the things that as, as I hear that, it's uh, both exciting to think because uh, I, myself and several folks that are on this call went through more of the um, managerial MBA, which really does teach you how to manage and, and focus on that. But uh, I think as, I, as I've learned a little bit about the curriculum that's been being developed, one of the things I get really excited about is just out of the chute, uh, uh, the fact that students in the very first class are going to start working on uh, your business plan. Could you kind of share a little bit of that about how? Yeah, so that, the different courses. 
Yeah, and, and, and you froze and I missed a lot of questions, but I think you're asking kind of what are some of the specifics that, that are the components of the, of the GSD MBA. And again, I think we go through every kind of aspect of how to do, develop a business, everything, and not just creating a business plan, you know, and, and what do you got to do to create um, a product that people love and embrace? But it's how do you, you know, in, in the world that we're in, it's all about talent. So, well, you know, what is your human capital program? How are you going to create a culture that is, is not only um, unique, but, you know, that's culture is the differentiator. People think it's all about sales or it's all about a product. Well, what, what starts that whole flywheel, in our, our opinion, is having a, a foundation that's built on a culture, a culture of integrity and trust. Um, and then, you know, going through all the different aspects of what you need to do to launch a successful business, you know, including how do you, how do you pitch this business, uh, not just to investors, but how do you pitch this business to people you're recruiting? How do you pitch this business to uh, potential customers? How do you pitch this business to the community? So people understand what you're doing and how they can help you, how they can support you, because it really is um, entrepreneurship is a team sport. There's, there's aspects that you feel very alone. And what, one of the things that we're trying to do is how do you pil provide that support network around you? So um, you know, you, we enhance the probability of that success. It's really good. And I, uh, I think everyone that's been doing Zoom knows that sometimes we have technical things. Evidently my internet has been going in and out today of all day. So I do apologize in advance. Uh, uh, but Michael, one of the things that uh, I know I've talked to several of our students interested in the program. They're always worried about funding for their start. And the perception is that funding is always the hardest thing to, to, to do. How, how will the GSV MBA help in that respect? And maybe even speak to the whole notion of funding, funding, funding. I've got to find my funding. How yeah. would you respond to that? Yeah, so a couple of things. Um, you know, funding is important and it's not easy. Um, I think there's other aspects that are um, more important um, than funding and frankly done right make the funding way easier. What we found working with many entrepreneurs and I didn't talk about some of the things you know, we've, we run startup programs uh, with hundreds of companies and work with major corporations and their innovation programs. And what we consistently find from, uh, from startup entrepreneurs is the thing they value most is access to mentorship and coaching. That's the number one thing that they're looking for is the differentiator. There's other pieces that uh, are, are also important that you wouldn't necessarily think of because everybody just says, oh, it's the access, how do I get the money? Well, the other piece is the money, um, uh, there, there's, there's actually um, a lot of money out there to invest in innovation and in great entrepreneurs. Um, but what you have to have is the credibility to track that money. And I think that's the GSV MBA program is not only going to give you the skills and the tools and the, and the, the know-how, but also the credibility. And so we think the graduates of this program are going to have the right um, uh, credibility in the marketplace that should be able to attract that, that funding. And, you know, one of the, the aspects of the program is going to be a, uh, the, the, you know, to graduate, you're going to pitch your company in front of a bunch of investors. And so again, we think um, the funding piece, while important, um, is something that we feel confident about that we, you know, the GSV MBA program should be a major boost to a company's ability, an entrepreneur's ability to get the capital they need to, to launch their idea. That's great. You know, you said the last thing you have to do is pitch your full to a bunch of investors. The first thought I had is, Will they not graduate if they don't get funding from that? And of course they will, uh, if they do the work. Uh, talk a little bit more about the mentorship and coaching as Michael. Uh, that's something that's been very attractive. And I think as you said, is one of the biggest things that will separate this program. Can you speak a little bit about how that will be incorporated in specific classes and throughout the program that students will be taking? Sure. Uh, at the very beginning of the program, we are going to help the students get a, appropriate coach or coaches to work with them uh, for um, aspects of the program and maybe even through the entire program. I mean, they'll have a coach that's with them 
uh, working with them to develop their idea and to help them with different issues. And not, not just to, and I think it's, it's again, there's an aspect of just, you know, how do you, how do you uh, uh, go through the, the materials and so forth. But I think a lot of it is just how do you think through different issues? And, and the, this, the coaching aspect is something that we have found is the, really the secret sauce of success of these programs. And so we, one of my um, close friends uh, was a, a person named Bill Campbell. They called him the coach of Silicon Valley. And Bill Campbell happened to be the coach for Steve Jobs at Apple, Eric Smith and Larry Page at Google, Jeff Bezos at Amazon. Uh, yeah, so Jeff, so, so Bill Campbell, they call him the trillion dollar coach as well because the, co the companies that he was involved in, you know, had that type of success. And what, you know, and that, that whole you know, experience taught me, you think of a person like Steve Jobs, how could Steve Jobs need a coach? Well, the fact is everybody needs a coach. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think that we, we, we think that, the, that having the focus and emphasis and really creating um, the kind of uh, pool of, of coaches that are here to support is going to be a key differentiator for the program, but also a major asset that the the, 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 the participants in the program are going to benefit not just during the program, but as, as they uh, launch, launch uh, after, after uh, graduate. That's great. Let me, I want to uh, call on Audrey Kelleher uh, and talk just to maybe, Audrey, I know you work with all the curriculum uh, with Bellhaven and have been working very closely with Michael in the development. And uh, could you tell us just a little bit more about the length of the program, number of courses, things like that, and maybe in your uh, curriculum development, some of the things that maybe stand out uh, that kind of excite you about this program and the way uh, it's being set up. Sure. It's a 30 credit hour program, which involves 10 courses. And as Kevin and Michael Moe have pointed out, the first course goes through an overview. Uh, you develop a, a tentative business plan. You develop a, a elevator speech to pitch your your ideas and your, your business. And then as each course, um, you, you navigate through each course, we study very specific pieces of what it means to run a business. For example, the, the human capital piece of it, the finance piece of it, the marketing piece of it. And we just get very specific and we look at it not in a traditional sense as somebody going through a regular MBA would be, but looking at it purely through the lens of entrepreneurship. And it's a dynamic curriculum. We'll be having um, a lot of guest speakers. We'll be having uh, live Zoom meetings, particularly with Michael Moe during the course of the classes. And as we've already pointed out, there's additional uh, supplemental coaching and resources available that uh, this is actually a very rich curriculum as far as being able to help anyone interested in entrepreneurship. That's great. Thanks, Audrey. Uh, I do have a question from one of our uh, prospective students, Michael, and uh, it is, uh, could this program be for someone who wants to run a social impact type startup rather than a for-profit? Would GSV investors be interested in this kind of thing, uh, or are they most likely to only invest in for-profit companies? What would you say about that? I think there's a couple different elements to that question. The first is absolutely will this program help somebody whose focus is creating a, a, is entrepreneurial in the social impact area and social impact is a tremendous area that has uh, lots of interest and lots of increasing investor interest. Um, there's the differentiation between a not-for-profit and a for-profit company, but you don't have to be a not-for-profit company to be a social impact company. In fact, I'd argue many of the great companies of tomorrow are going to have a social uh, impact element to them because it's no longer, I think the great businesses of tomorrow, the ones that are the most sustainable are not just about how they make the most you know, money and, and uh, you know, create the greatest uh, dividends for shareholders. It's really about what kind of impact you have in society with the philosophy that the greater the problem, the greater the opportunity. So, Absolutely, if the focus is social impact, um, I think that's the, this is gonna be a terrific program for you because it's giving you all the skills to run the business. And we also, and maybe I'll just divert for a second. 
uh, I'm sorry, because I, I think this is a framework that applies to anybody who's on the who's on the Zoom. So what we think the core elements of a great business, what an investor is looking for, what we're looking for, and frankly, when you look at the businesses that 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 uh, are the, the most successful and are the, have the greatest sustainability to them, they have what I call the five P's to them. First P being people, and, and this is about you know, who is the management team and what's their vision and what's the ability to execute. Again, we think this program is going to help uh, a management team really define their vision and help develop the plan that they can execute against that will give investors uh, confidence and will let the company uh, be successful. Second P is product. I believe strongly that whether you're a social impact company or any company, you know, having a claim to fame, what makes you special, different, or great? And that's a key part to really think about as you build your business because Me Too companies are really tough to, 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 to have you know, long-term success. Third P is potential. You know, this is like how big can this become? And really the greatest opportunities are where there's a problem, the bigger the, op the, bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. Social impact is, is by definition a lot of times focused on those type of issues. Fourth P is predictability. This is a, a key part of the program, um, but which is really about the business model. And again, when looking at a traditional MBA program, and even I think many entrepreneurship, you know, MBAs with entrepreneurship focus, it's really not thinking about the business model in a way that is creating kind of um, unfair advantages in sustainability to, to, to the future uh, viability and success. And again, that's true whether it's a social impact business or not a social impact business. But the fifth element it gets to buy where every company kind of is a social impact company, the way that I think of the future of the world. And that is the fifth P is about purpose. And I believe the great companies of tomorrow are going to combine those first four P's, but they're going to have a purpose beyond just, you know, creating revenues and making money. I think it's a purpose in terms of what type of impact they're going to have into terms of society. How are they going to make the world a better place? And they found it. And I really think this is also part of this idea that in the old world, it was about a finite game. I won, you lose. The world we're going into is a win-win infinite game. It's ongoing, it's not monopoly where, you know, where the game's done, our thing goes back in the box. It's about this infinite ongoing sustainable growth that, so, that, that, that to me is kind of uh, all aligned with being a social impact company. So I, I appreciate the question. Sorry for the long answer, but I think it also created a good opportunity to talk in more broad, strokes and the foundations and the fundamentals that we think are both core to being a great entrepreneur and being a great entrepreneurial company, but also some of the differentiation and the elements of this program. That's great. No, that's an excellent answer, Michael. And having worked with you for the last several months on this project, it's, there's so many things I want to get out on this call that I know we want to share with our prospective students so they can hear and understand it. And I love specifically that fifth point of purpose. I think that's so important and oftentimes missing in some of your uh, traditional MBAs. And I want to jump to uh, the fact that, you know, Bellhaven University being a faith-based university and, and with our purpose, you know, I'm wondering, does that, is that, was that one of the reasons as you looked at the partnership of uh, having a university like Bellhaven University and our focus on on our faith development and all that, does that make it a good match for this today's environment? And kind of speak about the whole Bellhaven GSV partnership and, and why you think that makes sense. Well, first of all, it's terrific. And um, I'm delighted to be partners with Bellhaven. And, you know, and, and that a, a, a key part of that is the foundation, the, the faith-based um, component of Bellhaven and the fact that I, as it relates to a successful MBA program and to create a successful, be a successful entrepreneur, I believe the foundation of that is, is about values and character and culture. And that is, and, and again, this isn't about, you know, a, a religion in somebody's face, it's about, but it is about values. And, it, and I do believe that, that be, because of the, the, the nature of Bellhaven and the values that it represents, it is very aligned with the kind of program that I believe can be the best in the world in terms of creating the truly game-changing, sustainable businesses that are gonna make a difference. I think it's also pretty core that you can't be one type of person running the company and be mm -hmm. a different kind of person 
and your, mm. your private life. I think for an entrepreneur, it's, it, it's, it's all one and the same. So I think the foundation of values, character, integrity, you know, culture, that really is the base of creating a successful business. And I think that is, you know, why I'm delighted to have Bellhaven as, as my partner here, because obviously that is the foundation of Bellhaven as a university. That's great. And I would just echo, I mean, I think you'll find students as you work with our faculty staff, you're going to see the same people. Uh, uh, the, the way we are at work is exactly the same. You carry, you don't, the door doesn't stop and you don't put on a different face as you walk out. Uh, I love to say, you know, my faith, family, and work are exactly the same no matter what I do. And that's a, that's a huge thing. Uh, Michael, we do have a question that is another one's come up. Someone's posted, and I think this is a real relevant one. And we we also hear this one a lot in uh, when we're talking to folks. Uh, would the student need to already have a business in mind, or does the course or the program help them uh, uh, allow them the opportunity to find a suitable business that might align with their uh, purpose and goals? Yeah. So first of all, you, you don't have to have a business in mind to enroll in the program, and I think a natural um, the consequence of being part of this program is stimulating ideas that um, could, could result in, in, in the business that the, 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 the student ultimately launched. I also think there's going to be students that come into this program that, that do have an idea and, and some of those will go all the way and, and, and will we'll graduate and will go through an investor presentation and they're off and running. And I think there's also going to be students that come in, they have an idea, and as, as we kind of go through the program, they're, they're, they, they do what's called in Silicon Valley a pivot. And they change their idea to something else. So there's, by the way, some of the great businesses that have ever been created have been terrific pivots. I mean, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, Slack, which is this you know, very popular software for, for, for enterprises today, started as a, as a game company. Um, you know, Twitter started as a podcast company. So, I mean, pivoting is actually a component of, uh, of being entrepreneurial. So again, I think there's gonna be students that come in that don't have any specific idea of what type of business they wanna launch. And that, that'll be, they'll be, this program will be great for them. There's gonna be students that have the idea, but they wanna get the fundamentals, they wanna get the confidence, they wanna develop this greater and, 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 and so forth and be part of this network. And that's going to be, I think, a, a, a part of the student base. And then there'll be the student who thinks they have an idea, but it changes. And I think all three um, are, are going to be, be very happy with this program. That's great. Thanks. Uh, one of the things that uh, also comes up, and we see this quite frequently, we're, you know, we're, we are still dealing, dealing with higher ed, just for, like the rest of the world, with uh, a pandemic that's going on. And... Uh, would you mind sharing thoughts on, you know, is this a good time for folks to take on entrepreneurship, to take on an effort like this to go through and get their degree? Uh, uh, for, does the, do these times make it better, a better time for entrepreneurs to, to have success? Or, or, or is this a, a, what would your thoughts on that be? Ironically, um, if you look out throughout history, times that where you're going through change and difficulty have historically been where you've seen a number of great businesses created and launched. Um, there's no question this pandemic and, and frankly, some of the, the issues that are, are, are going that I think that basically the pandemic has accelerated, um, you know, is, is, is daunting. Um, I've I said basically what the coronavirus has done is accelerated the future to the present and you have what I call BC, which is before Corona, and you're gonna have AD after the disease. But you go through different periods of change and whether you're talking about 9-11 or they're talking about the financial crisis, I mean, after the financial crisis, you know, think of the companies that were created during that, Airbnb and Uber, you know, and, and uh, uh, Slack and a bunch of different companies that now today are household Dropbox, household names, all started in the midst of that meltdown. You know, after 9-11, you know, he had Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And I mean, again, um, problems create opportunities. Mm -hmm. And frankly, the um, other thing I'll say is, I mean, obviously the world's broken. I mean, it's a, the world is a mess. 
And what entrepreneurs do is they fix things. Mm. So when you have this mess, when you have this brokenness, it's, it's, a, it's the best time for entrepreneurs to be out there be, and, and really creating solutions and fixing things that, that need, need to be fixed. That's, that's the greatest opportunities. That's great. So in many ways, it's, this could be the best time to enter into because there is so much uncertainty and out of that comes great opportunity. So that's very insightful. Uh, selfishly, I'd love to know what is the biggest mistake that you see startups make when they go out and uh, try to, to launch? Is there anything, I mean, I'm sure there's many mistakes that occur, uh, but are there any that really stand out uh, in your mind that, that I know we'll be teaching and talking about and helping our students not make those mistakes? Well, there's, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a long list, but what are some classic mistakes? One is to um, be thinking that you always have to be right and have all the answers. I mean, the, the reality is um, when you're an entrepreneur, one of the things you have to do is make decisions and, you know, and all your decisions aren't going to be correct. And what you have to be able to do is rapidly adjust, you know, when you realize that what you thought was the right decision, in fact, wasn't right. And, you know, I think we see companies that kind of go off the cliff are the ones that basically dig their heels in and don't kind of admit what reality is. I mean, the great companies that, that we've been involved with, I mean, frankly, again, I've started, you know, not only have we invested in some, you know, great companies, um, you know, over time, which we're very proud of, but I've started a number of companies. And, and again, I think when you see the companies that, that do well, it's not that they don't have problems. They all have problems. They can go on and on, on. I mean, you know, I, I give a presentation about, you know, these companies that are, you know, mega, you know, cap winners today, you know, almost went uh, belly up a number of times. But what they were able to do was to adjust and adapt and move forward. I mean, there's some kind of basic rules, I think, as a CEO. And I talk about capital isn't the issue that, that prevents companies from being successful. But you know the number one, number two, and number three rule of being a, a founder, CEO, of, as an entrepreneur is don't run out of cash. Now, you know how you don't run out of cash. Entrepreneurs often are very resourceful in terms of how they make sure they don't run out of cash. But you can never run out of cash because you know that's when the game is over. So you know there's there's a number of lessons to learn. But I think the most important issue is this idea of being um, adaptable. You know, being able to, um, you know, it's not that you are able to avoid problems. By definition, entrepreneurs are going to face many, many problems. It's, it's how you react or respond to these problems and how you respond to a decision that is, you know, that, that you know, you know is, is clear it's not the right decision. I guess the last thing I'd, I'd bring up is, because um, it's critical, is, you know, entrepreneur, um, is it build this team? Yeah, I think often, you know, or sometimes, and, and we'll, we'll help with this, this, this idea that you're going to make mistakes in hiring people. And, and some people look really good in terms of what the resume says, or they interviewed really well, or whatever might be the case of why you originally hired them. But it is all about the team. And when you're in a startup business and you're an entrepreneurial business, that team all has to be on the same page. It has to have the same goal. It has to be going to the same destination. So you could have somebody with all the talent in the world, but if they have a different game plan than you, they can't be on the team. You know, you, they, you know no harm, no foul, but they have to get off the bus because what you see is um, kind of people that have different agendas kill an entrepreneurial program. It is one, you know, it's all for one, one for all. When the, when the puck goes in the net, all the sticks go up like we do in hockey. <laughs> and that's that's got to be the attitude of the of, of the entrepreneurial business. That's great. I want to come to Mika with a question. She wanted to ask her own question. Mika, go ahead and uh, ask. Hi. Um, so I know that GSV has a focus on education, and um, having been a teacher um, through Teach for America and um, working in charter schools, I feel very strongly that teacher voice is important in um, when you think about where ed tech is going. And 
Um, I've never looked at myself as an entrepreneur. I've always looked at myself as like the co-founder, the, the person who helps rather than the person with the idea. And so I'm just curious, um, you know, if I am looking in, um, looking to continue to work in social impact. I don't know whose question that was. That might have been my question that I mentioned to Sheila, but that was that's something that's been on my mind um, very much. And um, so I'm just wondering, like, how does that process work of like finding the partners that are going to be there alongside you as you start um, a business? Yeah, it's a really good question. And but before I even answer it, thank you for. Uh, being a teacher and being part of Teach for America and charter schools, which are all, um, you know, I think uh, so, so important for um, giving everybody an equal opportunity to participate in the future. Uh, I'm really, my youngest daughter was a teacher at KIPP um, in Washington, D.C. For, for, for three years. And, um, you know, I just, it's, you know, as you, as you know, it's, it's one, very, very challenging. At the same time, it's extremely rewarding and extremely important. As it relates to how you bring people in, I think, again, you see a lot of times it's friends that kind of you know, have interacted um, in some type of, whether it was a previous job or whether it's in the, the, the school you went to or, or some type of affinity that you have. And you know, that, I think that's probably more, t more typical than not. I think what you also find, just so this, this is not the question you ask, because I'm going to get to that in a second. You also find that sometimes that works well, but often, or so, but sometimes somebody you knew in one setting is different than what they were like in an entrepreneurial situation. So, you know, frankly, being an employee, a lot of times is different than being a, a stakeholder or an owner and understanding kind of how people's personalities and what their interests and ambitions and you know what and what kind of teammate they really are in that setting you know is is something that's that I, I think is really critical how do you bring in a complementary team if you don't have you know because it is about the team so I think one is to have a very good awareness of what your passion is what you're good at and what your skill set and then how you complement that with people that um, can 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 uh, contribute to accomplishing the goal. It might be your vision, and your and your kind of idea of what product needs to happen, what service needs to happen, what is the problem, what needs a solution, and you're really good at that. But you need other people that can help you make that idea come to a business and, and into life. But that's but that's part of how you create, you know, the the network and how you create. Um, the process of, of really ideating and being able to develop your plan and then identifying what kind of people and, where, and what's the, you know, what are the different ways that you can, you know, build that, you know, build out that team. Um, and, and again, I think what you find often is that you find it from people you, you didn't know before. I mean, it, I mean is, is, we've seen that as successful as people that you do for 15 years. So there's, the, I think the, the core part is that you do build the team, that people all have roles and responsibilities that are well-defined. They're aligned, you know, I mean, again, with values and culture and they're, and they're aligned with where the destination is and where, where you're trying to head and everybody is signed up for that. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a critical thing how you do it, but that's something that, um, you know, we, you know, as, as we'll, we'll, I think being part of this program will help you with that um, tremendously. Make it, is that, <clears throat> follow-up question or does that answer what you were seeking to no that, that's thank you and i don't know if i mentioned but i also worked at kip um yeah. kip yeah. los angeles so yeah thank you for answering the question yeah you bet thank you for the question thank you for being on the call uh, uh we are right at 45 minutes in so what i'd like to do is uh i'm gonna ask sheila in just a second to talk just real quick about the logistics uh, as far as uh, when's the application deadline, when do we need to finish that up, uh, when will classes begin, things like that. And while she's answering, if anyone else has a question, uh, either one of our prospective students or some of the staff we've had on, uh, this has been great to kind of hear the thought process that Michael has had uh, as, as he's partnered with us as we've gone through this. And I think one of the reasons we're so excited about it. But Sheila, real quick, uh, uh, 
uh, basic stuff students need to know as they're as they're gathering materials and uh, mm -hmm. yes yes thank you uh kevin yes so the first uh thing we need from you is an application and you can go through to bellhaven.edu online to uh, submit your application we'll need your official transcripts from your degree granting institution uh, undergrad and if you have a master's degree we'll get that. If you need assistance in getting those official transcripts, we are here to help you to get those transcripts as well. The GPA requirement for the program is a 2.8 and classes begin August 24th, our first um, class for this program and the deadline for your documents and your application is August 7th. And we are here to help you every step of the way through the admissions process. So if you have questions about that, uh, most of you already know who I am and also Lisa, who will help you through the admissions process. Great, thanks for that. And uh, just a little shameless information, but we do wanna make sure folks leave here prepared. The other thing that I would uh, remind all of our students on the call is that uh, we do have uh, funding available in particular through federal government and there's something called the FAFSA that you'll need to go ahead and complete so that we can work through that with you. Sheila, anything you wanna share about that? They need to go ahead and start on that if they haven't already. Yes, that, that will be perfect. If you can go ahead and go through that process um, right now, and then we also, um, if you have questions about the uh, FAFSA, once you uh, present your information, we can help you through that as well. And then our code, if you haven't already done so, is 00 two three nine seven and most of you have already gotten that email information from us uh, regarding the financial aid piece right and that's free application for federal student assistance just for yes we, sometimes we talk in, in terms so uh, are there any other specific questions for Michael that we haven't already raised and you can either unmute yourself and throw it out there or put it in the chat uh, either either way does anyone have a question for Michael looking to see i don't see anyone jumping up and down uh michael are there anything uh i've got one last question for you here in just a minute but uh anything that we haven't covered that you think would be very relevant for our prospective students those are going to be watching this recording later uh just any other insights that uh, either i as a moderator hadn't been able to ask yet or maybe hasn't surfaced in our question anything uh, strike strike you no i think just the you know i want to reiterate the um I think the, the importance of this program, we're very excited about it, um, be, not just because it, we think it's innovative and we think it's um, uh, an area that um, there's opportunity. I think it's so fundamental to the future of society that we are able to build the leaders that are, are building businesses that are, you know, that are fixing you know, what is clearly a broken world. And you know, again, there's gonna be businesses that are created that um, are, you know, our food trucks. But I think, again, the biggest opportunities, you know, require um, the kind of talent and passion and ambition. Like I like to say that, you know, the, the uh, brains and the, and, the, and the drive, you see the for-profit, but the heart, you see the not-for-profit. I think those are gonna be the businesses that are gonna transform society and, and we're gonna help build um, through the GSV MBA program. That's great. You know, my last, Michael, you just jumped into my last question, which was, you know, if you had to make a pitch in 30 seconds, what would it be? And you just kind of did that. Uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us today to talk a little bit about the GSV MBA program. I want to remind uh, all the students and the folks will be watching later, there's more information about the program, both on the GSV MBA website, as well as uh, on the Bellhaven University website. Uh, uh, we welcome and encourage your applications. Uh, we would love to work with you. I think we're going to find this to be a very uh, uh, interesting and uh, progressive program. And as Michael laid it out, that uh, has more than just does all the things that a typical MBA, but really begins to focus on the purpose and the world changing aspects. Uh, so with that uh, last word, Michael, anything else you want to share? And we'll sign off, if not. Dare to be, dare to dream, dare to be great.
Dare to dream, dare to be great, indeed. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate your attention. Those of you that are watching this uh, uh, recording, if there are other questions that you weren't able to ask, please reach out to your Bellhaven counselor. Uh, if you even have another question that you'd like to get to Michael, if you'll go through uh, your counselor, we'll make sure we get that to you and have him directly respond to you separately through email. Uh, on behalf of all the folks that have joined, I just want to thank you. And Michael, I want to thank you for your time to come in and talk a little bit more. Uh, both you and the uh, uh, GSV team have been a pleasure to work with, and we look forward to seeing great things out of this program. So uh, God bless, and thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.